Hi and welcome to the video, I'm Dame and this is Dame Over and in today's video we're having a look at the best maps in Battlefield 1 in 2023. Now these maps are the ones that fulfill the potential for the very special, immersive and exciting experiences that Battlefield 1 has to offer. Each Battlefield 1 map has its own quirks, it's got its own positives and its own negatives ranging from stuff like vehicle balance to layout to size and a bunch of other things besides. All of this which I've taken into account to pick my top 5. These are of course my personal opinion so if you think differently I'd love to know so jump in those comments and let me know what your top five are and as a quick side note before we kick things off I will be talking about these maps in terms of playing conquest other game modes shift the balance in favor of other maps that aren't necessarily on this list so those that are best for operations might not necessarily be in the top five but it doesn't mean they're not the top five for other game modes now, as I've mentioned I have narrowed it down to a top five and I will be going from five to one in descending order so if you're one of those sociopaths who likes to read the last chapter of a book before you started it properly feel free to ruin it for yourself and skip to the last few minutes of the video and enjoy the special place reserved in hell just for you now let's crack on with the number five choice or actually in this case choices the following maps are in my opinion on par with each other for conquest and i couldn't really separate them so these maps are fort devoe and suez fort devoe one of the battlefield one community's absolute favorites but for me it kind of falls short on quite a few points it's an infantry only map which is always really fun the level of action remains quite high on this one you don't have to run for absolutely ages to find a gunfight and there is the potential for a lot of really cool battlefield moments unfortunately 85 percent plus of the map is stuck in an interior scenario which of course is absolutely fine and adds to that element of intensity that you get on fort devoe but it also means there is a lot of corner camping and as we all know very well by now a hell of a lot of grenade spam having very limited flanking routes sort of takes it down a few points in my opinion but it is still a good map and is still fun to play on our second mini choice for number five is Suez. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this map. I think the layout of the objective areas, especially those with loads of buildings in, are absolutely top-notch. It's a hell of a lot of fun. Every single class is viable on this map for loads of different reasons, and if the game is balanced, and that is a big if between the two teams, then there can be a lot of exciting gameplay between B, C, and D in particular. Lots of very classically battlefield destructible environments, loads of vantage points, and lots of options in terms of which role you want to take. All good points for Suez. The one thing that brings it down to the number five spot is unfortunately the linear nature of this map. It can so often and so easily become a spawn trap. And if that is the case, it is very rare that one team is actually going to get out of it and be able to compete and get themselves back onto the map. It happens far too often where a game on Suez turns into a complete walkover for one team. Now moving on to our number four choice, we have one of the base game maps and that is Ballroom Blitz. I think Ballroom Blitz has a really good combination of interior and exterior places to have a gunfight. The ground vehicle balance is in general actually very good considering the number of buildings that are indestructible so you can take cover in there if need be and the amount of vantage points you can gain over a ground vehicle. And the flow on this map is actually very good. There is a lot of push and pull between the two teams. Holding the central area and that big square that is right smack bang in the middle between B, C and D is a huge plus point and you'll be able to help control the flow of the game. But this has been balanced out by plenty of ways to get up there and plenty of ways to combat people that want to just stay up there for the whole round. Now I have knocked off a couple of points for a few reasons, which is why it is number four. Particularly staying up on that top square area, it's just a little too easy without much way to combat it for planes to take advantage of players trying to maintain a defensive position or gain map control in those elevated areas. The AA guns in Boron Blitz are positioned in not so great places. Unfortunately, you end up missing most of the sky because the buildings are in the way. So in terms of the balance against planes, it is very, very heavily skewed towards the planes. I have to also take into account that the map hasn't been patched for a really, really long time. And of course, there are areas on Boron Blitz, as I'm sure we've all experienced by now, that players can get into areas that they shouldn't be able to. Of course, it makes sense for you to be able to parachute onto a flat building. I completely understand that. But if it is actually outside of the regular play zone with no way to combat it, if there's no regular route up there by a ladder, for instance, then as far as I can see, it's kind of leaning towards using an exploit. It's not how the map was intended to be played on. And of course, we are almost to the day seven years into the life cycle of Battlefield 1. And it's obviously taken dice this long to not change any of it. I don't blame players for using that exploit. It's absolutely fine. It's in the game. So go ahead. It's just incredibly frustrating that it hasn't been addressed considering it completely ruins the map and can completely tank the game. 
Aura and Blitz offers you plenty of opportunity to use practically any class. Assaults are great on those interiors. Medic rifles, there are plenty of places to use those. My favourite on Boar and Blitz is to use the scout rifle and to try and control that elevated square that's in between B, C and D, providing overwatch and sniping people from a little bit of a distance. And there are also plenty of places where the support class can be really, really useful laying down loads of covering fire with their LMGs. And another point that's very important to me, which I'll mention in the rest of this list as well, is the amount of routes that you can take onto the map. You're not just shuffling down one singular road, unlike Suez, which you are basically playing down one lane. You're able to move around loads of the topography and loads of those indestructible buildings. There are always several options in which direction you can take. This helps give the players loads of agency. You can choose whether to take the most direct route, flank around the outside, etc, etc. It keeps it exciting, it keeps any playstyle viable, and it creates a very positive experience for the player, which is why Boron Blitz is number four. So moving on to number three, we have Achibaba, one of the maps that came with the Turning Tides DLC, and dare I say it, actually the only decent map that came with the Turning Tides DLC. The other three maps that came with that particular drop are actually pretty terrible in my opinion, so you won't be seeing any of those on this list. Achibaba, another infantry focused map that has the potential for loads of intense action. Now what's great about Achibaba is that the topography is really, really interesting. At first glance, you do have a lot of open fields with barely any cover, maybe a few rocks, maybe a few trees, but if you are boots on the ground in the middle of the map, you can't actually be shot from too many places at once. So you won't be punished for moving on this one. There are also plenty of trench systems for you to jump in and out of, but there's always the potential on loads of the objective points to stand your ground and try and stick to the fight. Not only that, there are plenty of routes in and out of all of the objectives again, with several of them just being dedicated to flanking routes, where it does create a level of intensity that you have to win your one-on-one -on -one gunfights if someone on the other team has exactly the same thought in their head. These flanking routes are the main potential for creating those only in battlefield moments where you can flank an entire team, chuck down a whole bunch of dynamite and blow them all away. Every class again is viable on Achibaba, another extremely important point for all of the maps that are making their way into this top five list, but you will struggle a little bit with the assault class with most of the weapons. The range that you're going to be having most of your fights at are just a little bit outside of SMG range, so you might be limited to certain areas of the map if you do decide to run an SMG or or a shotgun. Medic rifles on this map are particularly prevalent, but it doesn't mean that any of the other classes can't compete. It just takes a little bit of higher skill. One of the reasons that Achibaba is in the number three spot is that there can be a lot of circling on this map. Now, if you've played Nevar Knights, you probably would have noticed this as well. There can be lots of instances where the entire team will run from one objective, carry on to the next one, and then the next one, and just basically keep going in a circular pattern. It then ends up with the enemy team doing exactly the other thing over on the other the side of the map. So if there's a large imbalance in the quality of the teams, it means that the gunfights will dry up very, very quickly. Luckily, this doesn't happen too often, but the potential for it to basically tank the entire round again knocks off a few points for this one. And as an extra little note, I should point out that this is one of the only maps where mortars are particularly useful when you're within the trench system. Now, moving on to our number two choice, we have Amia. Again, one of the base game maps and one of my favorite to play in Battle Field 1. Amian is a great example of putting the player experience first above everything else. Each of the objective areas has at least three lanes in and out. More often than not, it's four or five. There are always several sight lines onto the objective areas, which favor each one of the classes for different reasons. There's a lot of potential for interior fighting in close quarters, which is always exciting. And the ground vehicles are very well balanced because of the map design. Amion is also one of the maps where balancing your squad can be extremely useful as well. Medics being up close with assaults can get you a lot of rewards on this map. Snipers and supports locking down lanes is a very good defensive tactic to use on this one. And again, there are plenty of flanking routes for you to take advantage of. But of course, it is possible on every single one of the maps in Battlefield 1, suffering from a spawn trap in Amion is actually quite difficult to achieve. And that's all down to having plenty of ways in and out of the objectives and in and out of the spawn areas. Not to mention the big old behemoth that can go right down the middle of the tracks. Of course, 
course the armored train and while it's pretty easy to take down can afford the team that gets rewarded with it a lot of opportunities to turn the tide but the infantry focused close quarters gameplay i think is really where amian shines that's where the excitement is to be had that's where the intensity is to be had and amian does it in such a very rewarding and exciting way and lastly on this list which you guys will probably would have guessed if you've seen one of my previous videos is argon forest and argon forest is out and out my absolute favorite map on battlefield one and i take a real deep dive into all of the reasons why in the video that you'll see in the card that's just up to the top right of the screen right now if you did want to check that out but let's go over a few of the main points now just like amion it has loads of ways in and out of the objectives there's always the possibility to flank there aren't any vehicles so you don't have to worry about vehicle balance at all sight lines onto objectives and into significant areas allow loads of different ways to play and loads of different weapons to be viable and the lanes that are available in argon forest allow for that very intense gameplay yet again there's loads of cover to move between if you're running around as an assault there are plenty of vantage points to take up if you're deciding to be a medic or a support player and if you want to sit back a little bit and pick people off with a sniper rifle it is more than doable from plenty of places Ogon forest feels extremely gritty it has a very intense atmosphere and the gameplay reflects that again it has the potential for being a spawn trap sometimes but like i said there are plenty of lanes and plenty of ways around those spawn traps but what's most important is that that central part of the map is always always busy it feels like there is a real push and pull flow in argon forest and for me this is the map that makes battlefield one battlefield one it's a real shining achievement, I think, and DICE did an excellent job with all of the maps that I've mentioned in this list, but Argon Forest really does take the cake. It has something just extra special about it, which I think is the reason why it is a widely agreed fan favourite. So that's my top five list of the best maps in Battlefield 1 in 2023. Make sure you let me know what your favourite maps are down in the description. I'd really like to know, and if you can leave some reasons why as well, that would be great so we can have a little chat about it. I stream several times throughout the week as well if you want to catch any more Battlefield content. If you knew, it'd be great if you sub and don't forget to hit the like button as well it genuinely helps me out and it's a super easy and free way to help support the content and until the next one that's game over peace